Yes! Pinar is in the air, scores! Take it short, here's Pinar. Pinar gets his third ever goal for Bafana Bafana. Two league titles with Ajax Amsterdam, one of only three players to play in the German Bundesliga. 62 caps for South Africa, player of the year at Everton in 2010. The list goes on, two World Cups for Bafana Bafana. This man has captained our nation. He is Skilo Steven Pinar. Skilo, it is so good to have you in the studio with me tonight. How are you? I'm good, and you, Thomas? Or, uh, should I say we are Pila, but I'm I'm Nandi. I'm Nandi? Yeah. What's that up, let's do this. Obviously, uh, going to the School of Excellence, uh, you know, for me, uh, I had to learn a new language. But, uh, yeah, I can... Uh, what well, so, from this old man, going at School ah, of Excellence? Just uh, sitting in a, in a TV room watching his or his or that <laughs> kind of thing, so, you know. You <laughs> know, <laughs> uh, you know, you, you have to get used uh, you in a new environment. Uh, you only speak two languages, so you, you know, there's about 60 kids, so you learn. You have to be with the guys. You you basically live your life with them uh, in high school. And now, when was that? Because you're now taking me back. School of Excellent days on a calendar. If I had to go look for it, what year was that? Um, I joined uh, 1995. Um, I was 13 years old, so leaving my mom, uh, my brother, my sister. I joined. I went to the school, and for me, it was a total different environment. You know, going there as a kid from Westbury. You meeting people from Cape Town. It was stuff that, uh, you know, for me it was totally like a different world. So then you have to learn a new language, and Zulu was uh, the most easiest language to pick up. So now, I introduced you of having been a professional footballer for 19 years, but in real terms, it's 25 years of football, if you take it back to 2013, of school of excellence, away from your parents, away from home, away from the comforts of what other people would have. It's 25 years in the game. Yeah, it is, Thomas. Like I said, you know, uh, for me, that, that first five years of going to the school, that prepared me as a, as a, as a kid, as a boy, you know, as a, as a human being to become a player that I am today. And thanks to the school, you know, I never even felt homesick when I was in Holland. So that helped me settle in quickly. So. You're here. I've been telling people all day long that there's a big announcement. Uh, Steven Pinar is coming to make an announcement. He's going to tell South Africans something. Age 35, free agent. What are you going to tell us? Uh, I think I'm uh, going to sign for a new club. <laughs> um, you know, for me, it's, uh, I'm coming here. Uh, first of all, I want to say thanks to my mom for being there all the years. And obviously, the people that's been supporting me throughout my career. The people that's been uh, behind me is the South Africans. I know there's good times and bad times, but uh, the support I've always got from the people back home, not only back home, wherever I played, for me it was something special and just want to come and make it official and say today's the day that I've decided um, I'm closing this chapter, I'm moving on to something else. I'm retiring from football and it's been a, a yeah, difficult one to, to put out there, you know, you get time to think about everything, uh, what you want to do in life um, after your football career. When the last year and a half, it's, it was a bit, uh, you know, you, you join Sunderland, you're thinking, is this what I want? Do you want to finish your career? How, how do you want to do it? And for me, it was, you know, been going on. And I told myself, you know what, why can't I come back home and just bow out in a way I want, mm. but things doesn't work out the way you want to write your own script. So it's important to, to come back home and just say thanks to all the people that's been supporting Why me. Why retire? You're 35. Retire yeah, 35, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a difficult one because you sit, you, you come to a place where you just want to play, um, enjoy your last couple of years and then where you have to wake up at half past six, for me it was, you know, it was a bit difficult getting used to that uh, half past six. And I thought, at 35, do you really need this? Um, I've got kids, I've got my mom that's getting old. So for me it was, it was something, it was long, you know, going to training every day, thinking about it. It's something that I was, you know, I said, this is it. Uh, I need to close the chapter. How do you feel right now? I mean, um, what is that feeling of knowing 
that you're not going to kick a ball against opposition again in a professional. What does that feel like right now? Um, you know, for me, it, uh, I think I'll miss it, but if it was more of a relief because, you know, as a footballer coming to the end of your career, it's difficult for a lot of players to, to close the chapter and say, you know what, now it's time to start something new. So I've decided, you know, the last three, yeah, two months, I haven't even touched the ball, I haven't watched any football, just to clear my head, spend time with my family, with my mom. And then you realize what things I've missed for the last 20 years. Just the simple things in life, like go to the shop, hawk, where people don't see you as a footballer, they just see you as you. And for me, that was a bit of a tipping point. You've mentioned your mom three times now in the time that we've been speaking. Has she been important in this decision? Yeah, she, she actually was the one that was, you know, in the last couple of years when I was at Everton, she, she asked me a question, just sitting at a table, Stephen, aren't you tired of playing football? You've been away for so long, mm -hmm. don't you just want to rest? And I said to her, you know what, Mom, you won't understand it while if you're a footballer, you've been in that situation, you've been in a dressing room where there's laughter, there's a lot of things going on, where you, if you go to the toilet, you can't even sit, play your still water over you, you know, you miss that things. And I said, it's difficult for me as a person, as a player, it's, that's all I've, I've known, I've done for the last almost 20 years, so it's almost half my life, so, and, and then... As I look at you now, you're emotional. Yeah, it is, because I know it's, it's a bit of a, you know, for the last couple of months, uh, I was like, Phew. when people ask me, what are you going to do? I said, I've, I've retired, but deep down I, I knew, you know, am I really sure, is this really what I want? And I've come to terms with it that it's, for me, it's time to look what I want to do next and yeah, spend time with my mom, my kids. So it is a bit emotional, but I'm just happy that all that is, that weight is off my shoulders. Was it difficult coming home? I mean, the time it hurts. And uh, did that play a role in this decision? Um, for me to come back uh, home, I always wanted to, to finish my career in South Africa. I've said it in the past, and to come home, I just wanted to come back and just enjoy the last year or two years that I've planned. That was what I was planning, but you know, as things go on, you come back to the country, new environment again, you have to settle in even, I know it's, it's something new as a footballer, you always have to adapt wherever you go. So when I came back, I thought, okay, it's, you know, let's see how this is gonna play out. And um, yeah. And then uh, I found out, yeah, I have to adapt again at the age of 35. It's a bit, you know, you're not young anymore where you, you can just switch off and switch on. So it was a bit difficult. And also, like I said, the whole stuff was totally different to what I was used to for the last 17 years. Uh, Goodman says, Stephen Pinar hangs up his boots. Uh, uh, Sani for the talent. Uh, moving up through some of the more. Christopher says, he's still the best player in South Africa. All my blessings to him. Uh, Homozo then comes out and says, you served your country well, Mpoye, too. Thank you. It was great seeing you grow as a player over the years. Well done. Good luck and Godspeed. And then I've got Sports World who come out and say, thank you, the real Stephen Pinar, for the good memories and the talent you shared with us. Uh, such a moving tribute and a way to pave out the game. Salute. It's just love coming through here. Wiley says, congratulations and well-deserved. Uh, a lived career. Good luck in your next endeavors, uh, Stephen. The love that's pouring through from South Africa here. It's, it's tremendous what I'm seeing. Yeah, it is, um, you know, for, uh, I don't know. It's just for me, it's, uh, it's something, um, it was difficult, but uh, I'm, all, I'm always like a person that's been myself and to get all the love from the supporters, it's really touching. Greatest moment? Um, greatest moment, I'll say, when I signed my first professional uh, contact, uh, that was one of Ajax. at Ajax Cape Town. But um, also playing my first game for the national team against Turkey, I think that was, uh, for me, was uh, a special moment because two days before that we played against Scotland and I was grumpy every, the whole time. And I walked around, Brad Jay was like, why are you grumpy, you're only a young boy? Uh. Why are you not smiling and that? I'm like, I wanted to play. And 
he, he just said to me, okay, you know what, I'm going to put you in. You can play free role, just play wherever you want. And I was, for me, that was, I think, if not stand out of my career. You mentioned your Bafana time, though. There's one thing that a lot of South Africans would want to hear from you, and that is 2012, when you retired from Bafana Bafana. We, I think, as a country, were just devastated. Like, number 12, number 10, he's gone. He's just decided to abandon us. Yeah, it What was, happened then? Uh, Thomas, it was something where, you know, it's things that's been building up over the years. Um, in the camps, uh, there was a lot of things that was going on behind the scenes where I kept it in for, for so long where there was, for example, we got it, we were just before uh, Pizzo lost his job, we were in camp and I was on holiday and I had to rush back to come to the national team. And for me, it was, you know, you want to you, you wanna do everything to get yourself prepared for the game over the weekend. So I said to the doctor, doc, you know, I've been having issues with my back. Can you get someone that will come in? Because we only had one physio and there was 24, 24, 22 players in the team at the time. And he said to me, don't worry, I'll organize someone to come in and look at you. So we went to the, to the gym. We were camping in, in uh, Rassenburg. So the doctor came with a person and I was having treatment and the security guard came over. He's like, yeah, you're supposed to come to me first. You, how can you just do things on your own? I said, but we went. Right, we did it the right way, where we had a, the doctor here. Yeah, the doctor con got me in, in touch with this person, so I'm getting myself ready for the game. And I, then I went uh, to, to Brabani, and there was a lot of things going on. And for me, that was, I went to the coach. I said, coach, you know what? For me, this is time. I think I've done everything that I want to show. I want to every game play at the, high, the highest level that I can, or the best, my best for the country. And it, it was just building up, building up. And when I sat uh, in Liverpool, I think it was we were playing uh, Brazil away and I got injured over the weekend and I got a call, ah, you have to come, you have to fly all the way to Brazil for the game. I said, listen, if you guys really want me to come, send the doctor over to come and have a look at me. And you know, from all the stuff that's been building up over the years, I just sat and I told myself, do I really need this? Can't and get anymore. I can't. And, you know, it's been building up and that was just for me, when you pour the bucket out, it was full. So, and then I decided, I just picked up the call. I told the guy at the club, just write a letter for me on, on my behalf to, to the people of South Africa. Uh, you know, it was, was a difficult situation, but I just had to do it. So you weren't turning your back on the country? No, there was a lot of things going on before that. And like I said, it's just things that have been building up over the years. And you, you know you get to that point where you're standing on the edge and you can't hold on to, to anything anymore. And for me, that was, you know, when it's just, it was a lot. And we I just understand. had to, I mean, we do to give. And I know a lot of people didn't, they just thought, here's a, the, the African Cup, we're hosting the African Cup, you're just turning away. But for me, I thought at the time it was the right decision to make for myself, for my family. They saw what I've been going through, the suffering that I had when I always go back and complain. So. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a difficult one, but for the people, I think, uh, that was behind me, that knew everything that was going on, it was important uh, to stand behind me and support me. I've got Anita here who says, Stephen retires from football and he looks and sounds like he needs a hug as he <laughs> declares this. It couldn't have been an easy decision to make. Uh, uh, farewell, she says. And then I've got Ayando who says, it's sad to hear that Skilo is retiring from football. What a player he's been. Wish him luck on his new adventure. Thanks for everything he's done for the country. Stephen, there's a camera over here and that's South Africa. So Oof. I think today is probably your biggest opportunity to tell South Africans what you want to say now, that, the, that football is over. Yeah, just uh, first of all, I want to say thanks to you guys from day one, the love that you guys showed me. I know sometimes uh, we were happy when we win games and there was times where me as a player as well, looking back, I've, we've let a, the people uh, down a few times. And, but, uh, you know, from deep down, I don't know what to say to you guys, but I know the love, I've always appreciated wearing the jersey and also to all the clubs that I've worked for or gave me the opportunity to, to wear their jersey. I'm really grateful. And yeah, it's been, it's been a long 
and yeah, with a lot, lot of ups and downs throughout my career. But and like I said, I really appreciate your love and thanks for everything. God bless you guys, and yeah, it's been it's been good. Wow, Stephen, all the best, man. We appreciate you. Thank you very much for the career. Thank you very much for the football. Thank you very much for all the memories and the contribution to the game. And I'll say that on behalf of all South Africans. We're going to miss you. We will miss you. We're uh, gonna thanks. Miss you. Um, yeah, there's a few things that I'm sorting out over the next couple of months. Uh, I just want to say to the people, there will be announcements coming up soon, uh, what I'm going to do over the next uh, months. And yeah. Coach like, Steve? Uh, not really. I, mean, I saw <laughs> that, what Ben is going I through, so no <laughs> I don't want to be laying on the floor and eating the ground. Thank you, so. Stephen. And thank you for choosing us to be the place to uh, make that announcement. No, thanks a lot. Thank you.